اعوذ باللہ السم علی من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد و نسر علی رسول الکریم اما بعد Welcome again dear viewers to Medicine and Islam a program sponsored by Sharjah Television that features topics relevant both to the field of medicine as well as to the great religion of Islam. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, it's been nearly three years now since we presented our first series on camel's milk. Since then, I have received numerous emails with questions regarding this most fascinating subject. Recently, there has been a lot of new information not only about the medical benefits of camel's milk, but also new and inventive products that make camel's milk more available to the public. But first, we will try to review the highlights from the first series. So today is Camel's Milk 2006, and this is part one of a mini-series that we intend to do on this most fascinating subject. Known by the Arabs, as the ship of the desert, the camel is quite a unique animal. Again, known by the Arabs as the ship of the desert, the camel is quite a unique and fascinating animal. They can go five to seven days without food or water. Five to seven days without food or water. But at the same time, they can drink up to 100 liters or 21 gallons of water in 10 minutes. They can drink up to 100 liters or 21 gallons of water in just 10 minutes. Amazing. Their speed can range from three miles per hour to 12 miles per hour. You know, that's about uh, five kilometers per hour to about 18 to 20 kilometers per hour. They have two sets of eyelashes. They have two sets of eyelashes to protect them from sandstorms. Their weight can reach up to 700 kg, 700 kg, or more than 1,550 pounds. Their meat is quite low in fat and low in cholesterol, but is very high in nutritious protein. Probably one of the most amazing things about camels are their milk. Camel's milk is probably one of the most amazing things about this animal. So let's you know, deal with a few facts and review a few facts about camel's milk. First of all, camel's milk is low in cholesterol and low in fat. So it is naturally low-fat milk. Now you know nowadays in the world so many people have high cholesterol. And if you go into the supermarket or the hypermarkets, you'll find regular milk, then you'll find low-fat milk. In America, you even find 1%, 2% fat milk. Uh, you'll find fat-free milk. But this is all cow's milk that has to be processed to remove the fat from the milk. Now, camel's milk is naturally very low in cholesterol and very low in fat. So it is much more nutritional for you. And for those people that have problems with hyperlipidemias or high cholesterol and triglycerides, it is very safe to drink because it is not high in fat. Okay, that's number one. Number two, it is low in milk sugar or lactose. Now this on one side means it does not naturally taste very sweet. Okay, in fact it tastes a bit salty. But in this part of the world, we notice that the Arabs like Lebanon. And Lebanon is a, a, a milk drink uh, which is a bit salty. And in Ramadan, it is very nutritional. So for people that live in arid environments like the desert, uh, fluids with a bit of extra sodium in it are better for you, actually. So Allah has created the camels to live in the desert. Uh, they are the most... Uh, shall we say, uh, uh, efficient animal of the desert. Uh, they can last longer, they can walk further, they can go longer without food and water, and they are designed and created to resist the high temperatures and the heat. So Allah has created them specifically for the desert. So the characteristics of their milk 
you know, reflects the special quality that Allah has given them. Low in fat, low in sugar, lactose, but is very high in mineral content. The mineral content is very high, okay? I mean, what is Gatorade? You know, you watch these people they, on sports, they play tennis, they play football. Usually they're drinking Gatorade. Now, Gatorade is a drink that is high in minerals and high in sodium. Because people that sweat a lot, people that exercise a lot, they lose sodium and they lose minerals, okay, when they exercise. So you'll find these tennis matches, ATP and French Open. If you watch the, the players, most of them are drinking some type of Gatorade, okay, which is high in mineral content. And this is what camel's milk is. It's high in mineral content. So for people that live in areas that are hot where they sweat a lot and they lose a lot of their natural minerals and so forth, this replenishes and restores the minerals to your body. So it is naturally high in mineral content. And the next point is also very fascinating. It has three times, three times more vitamin C than cow's milk. It has three times more vitamin C than cow's milk. So when it comes to vitamin C, which is an antioxidant, uh, it's a very nutritional vitamin. It helps fight off diseases, especially viruses and so forth. Uh, it is very good for the skin and texture of the body. You'll find that camel's milk has three times the vitamin C content of cow's milk. And it's also high in protein. It is high in protein, okay? And protein are the building blocks of the body. So, you know, this is what makes up, you know, your muscles mainly and a lot of your bone structure is based upon protein. Okay, that's the building blocks. It's like, it's like the uh, infrastructure of your body is protein. So it strengthens your body, all right? And your liver can convert protein into different things as well as needed. Now, another interesting thing about the camel is that the camel is able to, to produce or cut off its milk supply at will. The camel has the ability. Allah has given the camel the ability to produce milk whenever it wants to or to cut the milk production completely if it wants to. So it has a, a, a higher control over lactation, which is the production of milk. And the lactation period of the camels varies greatly from camel to camel. And I've heard from various people that have raised camels in different parts of the world, from brothers from Somalia, from people from the North African desert, from the Bedouin people here. They all tell me that whatever the animal eats, you know, that flavor and taste will come out in their milk. So if you, if you feed them nutritionist herbs and grass, then a taste of herbs and grass will be in their milk. You know, if they're eating uh, another a particular plant, okay, then the taste of that plant will come out in their milk. Uh, so at the same time, depending on what you're feeding them, it also determines their lactation period, how long they produce milk. So they're very fascinating animals. Uh, 